Today we are going to discuss cleaning your pH electrode. First, we're going to start by determining when you should clean your electrode. You want to clean your electrode when you notice that it's slower than normal, it's drifting, you have different calibration issues such as a bad slope or it's taking a long time, or if your SOP requires it. Thermo Orion offers a general cleaning kit with four different solutions A through D. Contained in this kit are each of the four solutions, instructions, as well as a beaker and a pipette to perform your cleaning. Cleaning solution A is intended for protein removal. This would be for applications such as cell assay buffers, protein rich samples, or as food products with milk and cheese and proteins. Cleaning solution B is intended for bacterial removal. This is for use for samples such as dirty samples, wastewater effluents, food and beverage, or anywhere where bacterial growth could be an option. Cleaning solution C is our general cleaning kit. This is a hydrochloric acid cleaning and it removes metals, scale, lime scale, unclogs junctions, or just general cleaning maintenance. Finally, cleaning solution D is intended for grease and oil removal. This may be due to fatty and oily samples, food samples, or even wastewater effluents. Taking our cleaning kit into the lab as well as the instructions, we're going to demonstrate how to use cleaner C. Starting out in a clean lab, free of clutter, choosing the appropriate cleaning solution, we're going to pour out a small alclot of the cleaner C into a beaker. You want to make sure you pour out enough solution so that when you submerge the tip of your electrode in it, you cover both the junction and the bulb. Next, we remove our electrode from the storage container, making sure not to create a vacuum, and allow that electrode to sit inside of the cleaner solution for as long as we deem necessary. This can be anywhere from a minute up to 30 minutes. Using a stand to hold the electrode upright, we want to make sure that the whole junction is submerged inside of the cleaning solution. After waiting the appropriate amount of time, you want to remove the electrode from the cleaning solution and rinse it thoroughly to make sure you remove all of the cleaning solution. Then we're going to go ahead, since this is a refillable electrode, and change the fill solution, starting by draining the electrode and then refilling it. You always want to make sure that you clean your electrode full so that none of the cleaning solution can move inside of your electrode. Using the appropriate fill solution, fill that electrode all the way up to the top. After you clean your electrode, you want to rehydrate the bulb. You want to let it sit in a pH 7 buffer for about an hour, or even better, let it rest in storage solution overnight. While waiting for that electrode to rehydrate, it's a good idea to change your storage solution. Go ahead and dump out that old storage solution and rinse out your storage container thoroughly. You want to try to change your storage solution at least once every two weeks to make sure that there's no buildup and no contamination of your electrode. Choosing the appropriate storage solution for your electrode Make sure that you fill your storage container enough so that the entire bulb and junction of your electrode are always submerged under storage solution. It is good practice to change your storage solution every time you clean your electrode. Once that hour is up, you can go ahead and start using your electrode to measure samples or return it to the clean storage solution container until the next time you need to use it. To learn more, please go to www.thermoscientific.com backslash water.